Is it possible to really make a good living in fly fishing? It's coming up on today's episode of Q&A Friday on Fly Fish University TV. Good morning and welcome back to today's episode of Q&A Friday. My name is Jordan Ulrich and if you're brand new here, I just want to say welcome because Fly Fish University and my ultimate obsession, we are all dedicated to helping you having a much better experience on the water because fly fishing is supposed to be fun and it's not supposed to be a grind. So each and every week we do something called Q&A Friday and today we are talking, this is a topic that is so dear to my heart and something that uh, I definitely am just gonna speak from my own experience, okay? Uh, today's question comes from Carson, and Carson, I actually don't know where he's from, but he has an amazing question because it feels like I'm getting this from like my younger self. He says, I'm 19 years old, and I'm really interested in building a career in fly fishing, but I have no idea where to start. I've also had a lot of people tell me that you just can't make a living in fly fishing, is this possible? Carson, that's such a great question. And this is something that I'm just gonna speak again, just from my own experience, because I've had plenty of ups and plenty of downs. I started my fly fishing career when I was 17 years old as a fly shop employee. I've uh, worked as a guide, worked as a shortly as a sales rep, uh, have owned a guiding company, and have since transitioned mostly into online education because it's my favorite thing in the world and it allows me to reach a huge number of people. And so we're just gonna start with, I'm gonna give you seven things. Uh, Carson, I really hope you're listening, but if you're somebody asking yourself the same question, then I hope that this is very beneficial to you. So the first thing, to ask yourself is why? Why do you want this, right? Why is this important to you? When you can tie a very strong why, a very strong reason behind something, it will allow you to persevere through the challenging times. And it's not a matter of if the challenging times will come, it's a matter of when they will come and what you can do about them and how you are going to fare uh, through the difficult periods. I've, I've definitely had, especially in business especially, you know, it's one thing when you're working for someone else because a lot of your, even though you don't have as much control financially uh, and you are ultimately limited financially, you also don't have that much to worry about because all you do is show up and work and you get paid. Um, I've, I've had plenty of hurdles that I've gone through, you know, in, in business and in my fishing career and so on and so forth. So. When, when you can tie, you know, my, my deepest reason behind all of this is that I really do believe that fly fishing has an innate capability to change people's lives because I've experienced it myself. I've seen people get sober and stay sober. I've seen people go through divorces and use fly fishing as a tool to ultimately get out of some of the most challenging times in their life. And for me, you know, fly fishing is such a deep, deeply fulfilling thing that the more people that I can bring to the sport, uh, the better, right? So that's much deeper, that's much more impactful than just saying, uh, I wanna get paid to fish, right? If that's, you know, if that's your deepest reason why, then you're gonna hit burnout really quickly. Uh, and burnout is something I've experienced many times as well, but you know, you're, when you pull yourself out of the burnout, you do it with your why, you do it with your reason, you do it with your purpose, okay? So, um, the other thing that I wanna say too is that when people say like, oh, uh, it's really hard to do that, right? Well, chances are they've never done it. So, you know, it's like going to your barber and saying, hey, can you tell me, can you tell me what stocks to invest in, right? It's not their area of expertise. So I have a golden rule in my life where I only take advice from people who have the results that I'm looking for. So I have friends that are very close to me that are mentors to me on some level and I look at the results, I look at the life that they have and I go, I want this. So I listen when they give me advice. I say, okay, I'm gonna take this into consideration because this person is where I would like to be ultimately. So uh, that's the first thing is, is why do you want this? So the second thing, and this is really important, I don't care who you are, I don't care what industry you're in, understand business, understand numbers, and understand cash flow. Okay, it's very easy to learn these things, but 
There's a reason, in my opinion, why 96% of businesses fail over a 10-year period, four of them succeed, does not even mean they're profitable, just means that they're still breathing. Okay, cash flow is the problem for, you know, a lot of times it's not a lack of enthusiasm, it's not a lack of hard work, it's not a lack of all these different things, it's a, a lack of cash flow, you know, and, and neglecting cash flow, not understanding, um, you know, each week, each month, each quarter, uh, these things are so important and something that I've only learned really deeply in the last year and something that I literally right now, I have two courses that I'm taking, uh, one of them from my business coach and it's it's all about understanding your numbers. So if I could go back and start over, you know, when I started my guiding company, I was like, no oh, money, you know, if I'm making five, six hundred dollars a day, I'm, you know, I'm raking in money and then, uh, <laughs> and then winter comes around, you're like, Oh, maybe I didn't make very good calculations, right? So understanding your cash flow, understanding business, and just understanding, you know, revenue and separating revenue, you know, top line revenue from bottom line profit. What are the differences between those two things? Uh, makes it very easy to understand how, how to make a really good living when you actually know what your annual, your monthly expenses are, right? Right down to the dollar, because then you can work down from there. Like, okay, if I want to live the kind of life I want to live, I need to be making in my business, 10K a month, 20K a month, whatever it is, 50K a month, doesn't matter. Um, it just comes down to like, how much do you actually need uh, to live happily, to, to live a life where you're not strapped financially. And I've been there many times and it just comes down to uh, a lot of times just a lack of forecasting, a lack of knowledge and, and really neglecting uh, looking at the numbers inside of your business. So I would suggest, you know, even if you're starting out as a, and another thing is your career in fly fishing doesn't have to be in your own business. I mean, it would be nice, but it doesn't have to be, that doesn't have to be the case. You can be a sales rep, you can be a guide, you can be a lodge manager, you can be an R&D manager, you can do all these different things. It doesn't have to be your own business, but it's important to understand if you are going to, you know, be a, a self-employed person, uh, to understand things like how a corporation works versus a sole proprietorship, things like this. Uh, they're very important things I wish I would have taken really seriously when I started, but at, uh, uh, at the start, I was like the technician. All I knew is that, okay, I like to fish and I don't want to work for someone else. So <laughs> uh, but that doesn't get you all that far. Uh, you really have to be able to understand how to read these numbers and they're very, very important. As much as we might not like uh, doing these things that we go, well, can't, can't my accountant do it? Can't someone else do it? It's like, no, track your money, manage your money and understand, you know, what these numbers mean because it sucks getting into a place where you don't have the money that you need for even something simple like, you know, your bills and stuff. And then you got to like, I've been through many scramble periods, but all it comes down to is just poor cash flow management, poor understanding. Okay, so next is um, who do you want to serve and how? So if you're building, you're building fly rods, you're building fly reels, you are, um, you're a fishing guide, you have uh, online courses, anything, you write books. Who is uh, your customer avatar? So who do you really want to be speaking to and and selling your stuff to? Because ultimately, at the end of the day, you have to know who your perfect client is. You have to know who your target market is. Uh, there's a great saying that, that says, if you market to everybody, uh, you market to nobody, which I think is very, very true. Okay, uh, number four is, do you want to have a business or do you want to have a, a side gig or a hobby? Both of these are okay, right? Like something like commercial fly tying, a lot of times is a side gig for a lot of people, but it's also, um, you know, it's also a full-time thing for a lot of people too. So understanding, you know, if, if you just want to have a hobby and you work on it, you know, a couple hours a week, no big deal, but don't expect it to go a whole lot further than that, right? That's, that's all I would say. And if you want something to be, uh, to support your livelihood, then, you know, plan for that. That's, that's great. I mean, uh, it's, it's 2021 is the easiest time in history to make money doing something that you like doing just because the infinite resources that we have available to us, like the internet, incredibly powerful. You're talking to me. Well, maybe you're, maybe you are. I hope you're not. I'm talking to you. <laughs> you're listening to me uh, because of the internet, right? So it's uh, just understand though, do you want to have it, does, do you want this to, to be a scalable business uh, or do you just want to have a hobby or self-employment, you know, a, a job that is, your own. Uh, all these things are cool, but understanding, you know, what do you ultimately want? 
Um, the next thing is, uh, and this is another thing, if I could go back and speak to my younger self, how are you actually going to generate revenue in your business? Uh, so, you know, uh, how are you going to take, you know, how are you going to get traffic? Uh, how are you going to convert traffic into leads, leads into customers, customers into recurring forecastable revenue? Those are really good things to understand. Um, and, and some people might not think about this when you're thinking about fly fishing, but Again, it doesn't matter what industry, it doesn't matter what niche, doesn't matter what you're doing. Uh, these are really important things to know. So, you know, at the age that you're at, uh, Carson, this is important to look at these things and get a head start on these things because you can look at, let's say you have, I used to sit there, you know, when I had my guiding business, I'd be like, why am I not getting any trips? And I'd be like, well, how many people are actually going to my website? How many people are actually looking at my pages, right? And it's like, oh, I only had 200 people this month and uh, a certain percentage of them actually converted. Okay, so I'm actually not doing too bad. I need more traffic though and I need more of the right people coming to uh, coming to my website, coming to my funnels, into my pages or whatever it is. Uh, this is really important stuff to know. It's just how are you going to actually generate money because money is the lifeblood of any business. Again, does not matter.